of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Amen. I thought you agreed to stay out of this. Look, Mr. Brack, just going to the airport and bringing the girl back, that doesn't mean a major involvement. I told you not to go. If she has to come, why make it easy for her? Why make it look like we're bringing her in? Your mother said go, so I go. Last night my mother told me. Well, that was last night. This morning she said, go fetch the girl. You listen to women? Try it sometime. She won't always be looking out that window. Then we'll see, Murdoch. <laughs> the baby, I'm sure they would have come after you themselves. I mean, instead of sending me. Just say I don't jump for joy when I see you coming. Then why do you stick on this job, you and that alley fighter? The money? Laura? Maybe we like it. Okay, end of discussion. What's everybody got against me? The way people around here act, you'd think I beat my wife, drank, Chased around. Who won the church prize last month for quoting the most scripture? Me. Old Testament, wasn't it? I hold with the Old Testament. Moses, 
the stone tablets, God's will in fire and flood. That's the way life is, Styles, with no mercy for the wicked. You think I didn't check on her? Last spring, when I went over to fetch Mark's body home, I checked on her good. Mark took her at face value. Went and married her, poor fool, still wet behind the ears. Well, I warned him. And I told Ma before he left, anybody can see he's green as grass. You let him go off to Europe alone, he'll get himself in deep. Listen, Mr. Brack, this is a family affair and I don't want any part of it. Don't try to backwater, Styles. I've heard Laura whispering her views of it to you. Schoolgirl romance. Mark was taken. Maybe more. Maybe the way he died, maybe she had something to do with that, too. Look, Mr. Brack, I'm not in this. I'm... Yes, you are. I'm putting you in. I'm asking you to talk to my ma, see? You talk to her for me, like I'm going to tell you. You must be kidding. Well, she likes you, Styles. Now and then, don't ask me why. She takes fancies to certain people. If she'll listen to anybody right now, she'll listen to you. I can tell you things about the little Swedish girl, one man to another. I don't dare tell my ma. Big as I am, she'd come after me with a bar of soap. Lather out my mouth. But after I've told you, you'll see the right of it. You'll go to her and you'll ask her to let me handle this. Let me tell off Mrs. Julie and send her packing before she tries to sweet talk her way in here. Your mother's even more bitter toward the girl than you are. I brought her the cablegram with the flight arrival time. I saw the way she looked at it and the way she tore it up. So what's your problem? Women say one thing, do another. You gotta keep the pressure on them, Styles. You ever expect them to make any sense at all? Last night, Ma says she wouldn't let the Swedes set foot on this farm. This morning, what did she do? She sends that sidekick of yours to fetch her back in style. Don't you see it's already happening? People around here think Ma's made of granite. But she's got a crack here and there, believe me, for all she pretends. But you haven't found it yet, have you? You don't understand, Styles. That girl, she was experienced. She turned Mark's head. They tell me over there she was an actress. Some studio in Stockholm, but she doesn't have much time for acting. She's so busy keeping dates with visiting firemen. That's what they paid her for at the studio. That's what she really did for her. I talked to her boss face to face after Mark got killed. He told me. Mr. Mr. I... Brack, it's 75 degrees in here, and today that's past my boiling point. You and your hard-jawed friend clear out of here. You're clear on out just as soon as he gets back. We work for your mother, Mr. Brack. On this farm, she's the man. Look, I'm sorry I said it. Will you just calm down and leave me out of it? They will try to hurt me. I know they will hurt me. But I won't forget what you told me. Patience. Much, much patience, Mark. And time. 
do know a strange thing, Mark. Everything you ever told me, I can remember. Every moment. And whenever it seems especially bad, as it was this autumn, I go back. I pick a time, any time. I live it all over again. Just ask me. Ask me to tell you about... about that Wednesday in Irland, remember? When you rode the windmill all the way round and I bit off my nails and... I was so nervous, so proud of you. Now, wasn't that a foolish thing to do? You could have fallen and been killed. He's going to be three months old on Sunday. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, Mark, I don't know if what I'm doing is right, but it is the best I can think of. This is none of my business, but... Well, do you know what you're in for back there? Mother Agnes, Brother Frank, Laura. It's a full house. You need a pack of aces. It's uh, my way of saying good luck. Didn't Mark ever teach you poker? He had two weeks. Out of a lifetime. Two weeks. Can you imagine anything so brief becoming so enduring and important? Would you like me to hold the baby? It's probably getting heavy after all this time. <laughs> it's a balloon heavy. You know, sometimes holding him, I think if I don't catch on to something, he will sail right up into the clouds, he and I. I'm ready to go now, Mr. Murdoch. pretty important to her. Why don't you listen before you condemn? I know why she's here. After this is over, after I've run her off, I'll show you who's the man on this farm. get on my knees. That's the wrong technique. Around here, anybody gets down on his knees gets stomped on. So don't tiptoe. You just go in there swinging, huh?
know how she feels about that cop. It's a sign, Beth. That girl is standing on the fire. She's turned around so I can't see her. So it's a good sign, Beth. Once before I mended this so she didn't even notice it, but now. I don't know, Frank. Get up off your knees, Beth. Do as I tell you. Don't you know what today is? And that day the Lord will take away the bravery of the tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls. And the bracelets, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, and the nose jewels, and the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the whipples, and the crisping pins, and the glasses, and the fine linen, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Stay out of this, Frank. Your ma will handle her. It's not just the Swede. Don't you understand anything? Are you all buttered, Beth? Don't you ever want to be the lady of the house? Don't you ever want somebody else to have to worry when your cup is broken? I never thought much about it. Find my place, Beth. You're Frank. Frank, dear. Answer her. Who told you to bring these bags in? I don't know, conscience, maybe. Uh, you can trot them right back out again. Mrs. Agnes? Get yourself some coffee, Buzz. We'll talk in the parlor. Nephew. I named him Mark. Todd, your friend is in the kitchen in case you're looking for him. Did you see how curly his hair is? Mark had straight hair. <coughs> now go busy yourself, darling, beyond earshot. Am I not a member of this family? A am I not allowed to participate in family discussions? This is not a family discussion. This is quite simply a matter briefly disposed of between me and a visitor. It was nice seeing him. Laura. And you. We both must have gained two pounds since we left Stockholm. They fed us all the way over. Beautiful carts of food and champagne. Every time I ate, I fed him. Like a party, you know. Oh, I, I wonder, uh, would you mind if... He hasn't been changed for quite a while. Why weren't we told there was a child? Sixteen letters, Mrs. Brack. From Stockholm to Boiling Springs, from Boiling Springs back to Stockholm unopened. And they tell quite a story, if you're able to read between the lines. Dear Mrs. Brack, 
I know how you must feel to learn of Mark's death so far from home. Such an unnecessary death. But I can assure you, until that Wednesday afternoon, I know how happy the last two weeks of his life were. And they go on like that, starting with love, growing into surprise and disbelief when I saw them coming back on red, and then anger and desperation and finally prayers even. For once in your life you've grasped the situation quite correctly, my dear son. She is quite a little actress, isn't she? Among other things. How old is he? He is Mark's son. Don't you think it's time you let me handle things? The first thing I'll ever let you handle, my dearest son, is my funeral, after I've arranged all the details. Now please stand aside so I can see that girl while I talk to her. Please, Frank, be a dear. Sit down. When I sent Frank over to bring back Mark's body, I told him, stay away from her. I wanted no contact then, and I want it less now. Don't think that baby makes any difference. And don't think that you're entitled to anything, no part of this farm. I operate this farm, young lady. I've run it for 16 years since my husband died. And I run it a lot better than he did, puttering around here with his pipe and his dirty old shoes. It's in my name, all of it. It always has been and it always will be. So you see, when you tricked my baby Mark into marrying you, you married a mere boy with nothing to his name. That is your share. Nothing. <laughs> now you take that baby of yours and get out of here. Out of our lives. You cannot be Mark's mother. And stay out, understand? Stay out. I will go out of your house. But I'll stay here in Boiling Springs. And whenever I can, wherever I can, you will see me and you will see this baby, Mark's baby. And you will learn to miss him. And you'll think of him at night and, and want to hold him and love him. Buzz. I beg it.
anybody can quit. The day everybody can quit, that'll be the day. Don't you think I'd like to run away, too? I didn't mean that, not really. I couldn't leave her. You see, I understand her. She may not be a good mother, but she is a good person. Does that make any sense to you? Too much for a girl your age. I understand her too, Laura. That's why I've stayed as long as I have. There's a limit, you know? Then you don't understand. That's what understanding is. Taking away all the limits. Mama wasn't always like this. She had to take over. For Frank and for Mark. For me, because Papa... Well, Papa was a beautiful dreamer. But somebody had to save the land. There were bad years, Todd. Very bad years. Frank was sickly and... Well, Mama was forced to be the man in the family. She worked hard. Day and night. Harder than any man. And then Papa died. And... Well, she just kept right on. When that happens to a woman, I just guess she can't go back to the sewing room. Oh, don't leave. Not yet. At least not until I've tried one last thing. I've been thinking about it all week. Ever since Mama ordered Julie out of the house. Please. Mr. Brack? Mr. Brack? Yeah, yeah. Mama's not around. That give you any ideas, Frankie? Well, it better, because I got a great idea. You see, there's this girl from Sweden. Very nice girl. Except the way everyone acts around here, you think she had leprosy or something. Nobody in Boiling Springs will talk to her or even rent her a room. And that's because you put pressure on him, right, Frankie? And if it wasn't for that resort hotel down the road there, who couldn't give a darn about you or your pressure, she'd probably be camped in the woods or someplace. But you see, she's broke. Dig? Like, where does the next meal come from for her or the kid? So I'll tell you my idea. I'm going to help that girl. She's going to get a job so she can stay here and buck you. And then after that, we're going to cut out. So get somebody else to raise your chicken dinners. You got that picture, Frankie? Yeah. There's just one other thing. <laughs> Frank, I'm, I'm sorry, I... <laughs> Frank's inside, uh, You better go in. I couldn't hit him. 
It was the Lord's anger bad smiting me in that boy's fist. The Lord's own anger. You get up now, Frank. This is no place for a man. And down here on this floor, I can see what's happened to me. I'm like this mesh. I'm all stomped on. I got no shape. I've been waiting so long. I just got blind when I saw that girl, her baby. And that's what made me made me go to our friends and tell them to turn their backs on her. I just been waiting too long, Beth. Oh, Beth. I'm ashamed. I'm deep ashamed. Anyway, I always did want to know what a spare tire feels like. So what does a spare tire feel like? Uncomfortable. When commandos strike at dawn, don't they get a little something for their morale? Well, I don't know. It's been a while since I struck. Hello. Hello. Defying your mother, coming here wasn't easy, Laura. I'd rather not think about it. Just let me hold him. Half an hour, Julie? All of a sudden, my arms feel so empty. I Oh, he'll be all right. You seen yellow breeches? Right down there, across the meadow, a river. It's jumping with history, not with fish. It seems uh, they fought a war around here, some of our boys and, and the British. Why don't we go down and see how it turned out, huh? Yeah. Half hour will be fine. You know, they've got this new package in the stores. Comes in a handy 500-pound package. It's called Instant Conversations. It's for cats whose tongues have been got by people. And all you do is you add a little water and you stir. And then Alakazan, you're on like a filibuster. It's going to be pretty big on the market. What do you think? Who needs Instant Conversations? I told him would never go. Silence. That's what I told him at the board meeting. I said, if you could find a way to package silence, you'd make your first million. That's what I said. I wish... Oh, go on. Take ten if you want. I mean, even the genie digs inflation. I wish I could pretend you were Mark. I wish I could pretend I didn't want you to try. What do you know about me? What I am, what I've done? What do you really know about me? What do I have to know? Everything, nothing. I cannot decide which. Well, I was out in the bulrushes, Mama, and there was this funny little rat. Well, I did... Laura! You've come close a number of times before to being an objectionable human being, but you never before have gone past the allowable maximum. Are you following me? Mama, please don't lecture me. Talk to me. Why is it so wrong to love something? 
When did I ever teach you that it was wrong to love? It's a question of what and whom one should love. There's a difference. What I've ever attempted to teach you was to recognize that difference and to acquire a sense of judgment about men. Men? But, Mama, look at him. Just take him and hold him. This is your grandson. This is Mark's little boy. All we have left to show for Mark. This is something that I choose not to discuss with you. I'm going to discuss it. I'm just going to discuss it and discuss it and keep discussing it. <sighs> I've been too lenient with you. It's one of the penalties for growing old. We become entirely too tolerant. I want you to take that baby, whoever he is, back to his mother. As soon as you've done that, you come back here and go to your room. Put all of your books out in the hallway. Beth will serve you your supper. You'll eat alone. I've never seen you afraid before. You're afraid now, aren't you, Mama? Afraid? Afraid to hold him, to look at him. To see Mark in his eyes. Mark's face. His face. You don't dare, do you? Do you, Mama? I'll take the baby back to his mother. You go back to your room, shut the door, and stay there. No, it's not Laura, as you can plainly see. Laura's being punished. As for your part in this, as long as you remain on this farm, please mind your own affairs. Now, if you'll be so kind, drive me to the place where you got this child. I just want to tell you one thing, Mrs. Brack. The only reason I'm still within a hundred miles of your farm is that Laura begged me to stay and give you one last chance. Are you going to drive me, or must I use my own car? I'll drive. you wait in the car, I'll take the baby in. Julie's about at the end of her rope, 22 bucks and a broken dream, so why kick her when she's down? I'll take Mark in, and I'll come back out and drive you home. Oh, you talk too much. Open the door. Look, 
this is one of the best little theater groups in the country. And they've still got a month to go before the season is over, so uh, why isn't it a good idea? You're not about to find work in Boiling Springs. You know, the Bracks took care of that, but they're not going to push these people around. Why would they want me? Well, you're an actress. The studio never gave me much to do. They... No big parts. You don't have to tell them that. Tell them you're the biggest thing since Greta Garbo. How do they know? Oh, as soon as I walk on that stage, they would know. Believe me, they would know. On the contrary, you're quite an actress. Why don't you go up on the stage and show us how talented you really are? Well, how touchy. Look at them. Completely won over, convinced that I'm some kind of a monster. What you did just now, tearing your child from my arms, isn't what you really wanted to do, is it? Actually, you came to this country to put the child into my arms. Once I held him and wanted him, you'd name your price. How much? There's no law that says you have to stand here and take this kind of abuse. Come on. When you came to my house, I saw through you one look and I knew you. Open your purse, Julie. I'll stake my life that there's a return trip ticket in there. And once you got the money that you came for, you'd go back home alone without that precious child of yours. Well, you win, Julie. I'll take Mark's child. How much? I said, how much? When you have been used by life, you grow mute. Only one thing can give you back your voice, your courage. Someone who truly cares no matter what you've been. Someone who can replace the real you with another you, a better you. And Mark did that for me. And when I lost him, I lost myself. How could I ever be strong enough or worthy enough to raise his child? I could only fail him. You're quite right. I brought him here to leave him. But not for a price, not for money. Just so he could have a home and a life and things I could not give him so he, he could be brought up in his father's world. And now that I know you, Mrs. Black, I'm not going to leave him here. I'm not going to give you another man child to destroy. Destroy? You who killed my son halfway around the world. Not me, Mrs. Black. You were his killer. Ten thousand miles away, you were his killer. He died in the water outside Old Town, in Lake Malheran, that empties into the Baltic, and he died alone offshore. And I stood on the rocks and I screamed, Mark, come back, come back! And he wanted to prove his manhood, not to himself, not to me, but to you! No other boats went out that day. Not with those winds. And he went. And I begged him not to go. I held on to him and he went, his hand trembling on the tiller. And I heard his last words and I heard them in my sleep. If Mama could see me now! Mama! Mama! We all drowned that day. Mark and me and little Mark. Wait. You said that Mark gave you back your courage. Why run? Why not stay and fight? For what? For your son. Did Mark give you enough courage for you to stay and fight for your son? To protect him against me? To fight? Oh, not just this afternoon, but when you're tired, off guard, when I challenge you or your son, when I threaten. 
have you enough courage to try? Let Mrs. Brack hold her grandchild. me to change and don't expect to have an easy time of it Executive Producer.